This is Cylindrical Motion 3, and what I'm going to um, touch on here is some of the higher uh, velocity things. Uh, you'll typically see these in a lot of belt systems, and maybe even in your car. Uh, when you start seeing high RPMs, uh, you can start expecting uh, vast differences with at different locations along uh, a path. So I'm just trying to show you what I'm talking about here. So first of all, you have this pulley right here that's spinning around and this belt, I mean this pulley is going initially at 1700 and uh, 1750 RPMs and after six seconds it will be going uh, 1150 RPMs and it says after that six seconds what will the acceleration at point one and point two be and first of all let's just write out our equation for acceleration that will be a acceleration will be v squared over rho normal plus v dot t tangential right so first of all we just have to look at this. Uh, what is our rho? Well, our rho will equal half of the diameter, right? So that will be 100 millimeters divided by 2. That's 50 millimeters or 0 0.05 meters. OK, so that wasn't too difficult. So now we need to determine the, let's try and determine the velocity that we're going at, at that particular time. Because that would be important for us to know, right? Um, and what do we need for velocity? Well, velocity, we know velocity in uh, a cylindrical motion problem. Velocity will equal uh, theta dot r, or in our case, theta dot rho. So we don't know what theta dot is, but we can convert it from the two initials and final. So why don't we just do that? Why don't we find out what our initial and final theta dots are? So I'm going to say theta dot i initial would be 1750 uh, rotations per minute, and then one minute equals 60 seconds. And 2 pi radians will equal 1 rotation. And from that we'll get 183.3 radians a second. And let's just do the final real quick. Your angular velocity of this is 1150 rotations a minute. Same conversion, same stuff. All the same. And the number equals 120.4 radians a second. Great. So, oh, well, now that we have the initial and the final, we could actually use this. Sorry, I'm going off track a little bit, but we could use this to determine our angular acceleration. So theta double dot, which would equal theta dot f minus theta dot i all over delta t. Well, we already have all that information. That would be 120.4 minus 183.3 all over 6. That's our delta t which equals negative 10.5 radians a second. So this is actually our, um, this is our theta double dot, which we may find useful later on when we're trying to determine what our um, acceleration is. We'll just box that and continue. So first of all, let's, let's determine what the acceleration at 
1 is. Acceleration at 1. Well, let's start off with normal. 1 normal. The acceleration at 1 normal would be v squared, which is... Hmm... Okay, I'm going to substitute, rather than v squared over rho, I'm going to substitute, and I'll just let you guys figure it out, it's a good little project, but it's rho theta dot squared. Just a quick little sub, and uh, with that plugged in, you can actually, this is like more appropriate for the angular accelerations, and it equals the same thing, so we can just plug in all the same business. And that would equal 0 0.05 meters times our theta dot, but it's going to be theta dot final. So that would be 120.4 squared. And when we solve for that, you actually get 724.8 meters a second squared huge number. Okay, so let's see how everything else lines up. A1t, that will be uh, essentially v dot, which, well, v dot would be, well, we know v is equal to r theta, or rho theta, right? Theta dot, so v dot would equal um, r theta double dot. Aren't you glad that we solved for that? So it would be 0 0.05 meters times negative 10.5 radians per second squared. Which when you work that all out, that equals negative 0.525 meters a second squared. Notice how the pulley rotation decelerating actually puts very little acceleration on the entire belt. You see a lot more acceleration being put on on the belt uh, on the, on the curve uh, through when it's going through the pulley system, which makes sense because it's actually it's changing in direction very quickly when it's going around that. So you have to look at that. the, the direction of the curve is changing very drastically. So if we just, I mean, really, there's no point. Um, if you did a combination of these with the Pythagorean Theorem, uh, you could do it if you would want to. My argument would be that, uh, you know, that one overly dominates the other, so you really don't even need to include it. I would just say 724.8 meters a second squared. And that's at 1. So then let's rush right over. What we can realize is that uh, A1t will equal A2t because they're on the same belt. So they will be decelerating at the same speed. So that will equal negative 0.525 meters a second squared. Awesome. And then you'll have A2n will equal zero. And why will that equal zero? No curve. Point two is moving on a straight line. Which, what does that mean? A straight line encompasses a row of infinity, which, what's the acceleration of uh, equation? v squared over rho, which v squared over infinity goes to zero. So a straight line encompasses a, a radius of infinity. So the total acceleration um, the total acceleration of 2 is actually negative 
five two five meters a second squared. And that is our solution at two. I just wanted to point out that there's huge differences from different points and it will be your job someday to point out where those critical points of analysis are so you don't need to go analyzing say this point two and more so go analyze point one and I would say even maybe <laughs> analyze the other side because the material the belt would actually be under tension at that point uh, more tension under that point so uh, that that's for a future topic, and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, cylindrical motion. Please leave a message if you would like more uh, material, and I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to touch on polar coordinates next.